I'm going to call this out quickly right before you launch. We've got BDI rolling out with four AMX 50Bs and two Mosses with a Bat Chat 25T. NL coming out with two Bat Chat 25Ts, a Waffle E100, an E4, two IS7s, and a Moss. So this is the first round of NL versus BDI. Top two seeded teams oh. after our Operation Barbarossa. You ready for launch? Ready for launch. Let's get her to going. Uh, so, so like I was saying, uh, the meta is so much different from these teams in the in the EU, the in the Russian circles uh, and servers. Um, I I have never seen fifty Bs used to this extent uh, in, in in the, the North American teams. It, it, they always like. From from the teams I've had familiarity with, they'd pick a T fifty seven or even the, the the Cranwagen first. They wouldn't Yeah. They wouldn't be using the fifty B. But I mean it we saw it work very well last week when when uh, Fame versus Phoenix. That was a great match to stream. Uh, you can go back and check that out on YouTube. Yeah, that was that was awesome. The waffle was really different. I've never seen a waffle in a competitive <laughs> match of this caliber. Uh, I mean, I've seen them from time to time. People, you know, they've been brought out, but never really uh, a major player. Uh, but these teams definitely proved that they are excellent teams after Operation Barbarossa. So I can't, uh, I can't, I can't put any criticism towards them. For picking, for picking tanks. I mean, they clearly know what they're doing. Uh, I'm glad to see that these these teams ended up getting pitted on a map like Ghost Town, because uh, Ghost Town being a very even from both sides map, uh, we're going to see four rounds here where where the better team is really going to win. Um, you can't really. Uh, you can't really have a, a spawn point advantage. BDI has set two of their 50 Bs at the far back corner there. Their bat chat scouting. The IS 7s see him, fire a shot at him. But bat chat's a difficult target to hit on the move from an IS 7 at that range. NL's got their two TDs positioned in the far back. You got denied. He's looking straight through that center of the circle. He's going to have a difficult shot on the Moss, but he might be able to pick one off. But both teams taking defensive positions. Crucial cross out over in the far top corner, sitting in a bush. Just patiently waiting it out. BDI is not sending anyone up through the north, though, so he's going to be sitting there scouting an empty field until the move is made. And what do you feel about this setup so far, Ella? Um, I think that, you know, I like that NL is playing really defensive. They're just waiting for them to make the mistake. Hold still, they're not spotted for the most part. Makes the BDI probably really wonder where they are. You know, are they pulling a secret flag? You know, are they waiting somewhere? They not sure. I like it. Tank killer. Scooted up across the north of the map there. Tried to get some spots. He backed off. He didn't get any. He, I don't think he detected either of the 50 Bs or got detected himself, but he's he's not going any farther. He he hit the his comfort zone there and decided to fall back. You, know, you see, smart players know when to fall back, even if they're not detected. They just have a sense of knowing that if I go any farther, I'm going to end up getting caught in a trap. You can already tell um, the experience from these teams. Without, without ever seeing these teams play before, you can tell 
that both of these teams have a lot of experience. The 50 Bs for BDI moving as a group here, coming through the city. Discord technical difficulties here. I'm wondering if the fact that both of these teams know that each, the the opposite team was top ranked team from the Operation Barbarossa event. I wonder if that's playing into the psyche of, of this ma match. Neither team wants to be the first to go down. Ooh, crucial. Get hit, gets double tap from the 50 Bs. He's on the run. Gets out of view range. And as he's running, NL is rotating around the bottom here. We're seeing a very slow rotation. But they're sticking together really well. A couple good shots landed by both teams there. BDI's bat chat is very low on health. And NL was able to absorb damage from four different tanks, keeping no one... Oh, now Crucial Crossout takes a big hit. The bat chat in the north there. BDI is on the move here. Let's see if those 50 Bs can take out Kreger Panther in the waffle before he's able to unload his magazine. Yeah, they really need to get that waffle out. Four fifty Bs pose so much burst damage. I just hope that when they empty their magazines, they don't end up stalling out on their push here. Patriarch takes one final shot at Crucial. He goes on to a reload. So he's his gun's out of the fight here. BDI's been able to take out two tanks. Or sorry, NL's been able to take out two of BDI's tanks here. And it's not looking good for them. They've got two tanks on one shots tucked into the corner. BDI is gonna push in with the moss. He's being he, he's being cautious, even though he probably didn't have to. He probably could have just rolled around the corner and eaten shots from him. He still plays it cautious. BDI's got two tanks left, and the moss goes over the edge. NL coming in, finish off the final tank. NL taking the first round. And they had really good damage. Like, they all did. They shared it really well. Oh. I forgot to put the allies versus axes screen up during that match. That's okay. Um... NL winning the round, getting 20 points for the win, 14 points for the kills, 34 points, 6 tanks alive, so that's a 40 point round for NL in round 1. BDI only getting 2 points for the single kill. So NL taking a commanding lead after that first round, although it looked very close and they both were set up in great uh, defensive positions. BDI made a made a push and their 50 Bs stalled out. Only one of those 50 Bs was able to break a thousand damage. And and that was actually the one that trailed behind on the push too. The one that was going after the bat chat. Uh, Moss, Thin Donkey and the Moss got 2400 damage and Iwa the Exawa got 1800. This is going to be a difficult match for me to uh, I don't see names. I'm going to see in that. NL, I love the spread of damage. 
Every single one of their tankers broke 2,000 damage. Nobody standing out as, as the clear carrier in that, in that match. Uh, an, an excellent team play game. Everybody moving together. Everybody uh, focus firing and sharing, sharing the workload. And they really shared that that looks really good. Everyone did something. This is round two for Some NL versus BDI. Uh, all right, I'm going to start. All right. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, never mind. Never mind. Sorry, I misread that. <laughs> I saw the F1, FV215Bs, and I, I for a moment I was like, oh, they picked two. Two Death Stars, that's illegal, but then I realize it's it's the <laughs> it's the um it's the heavy. Uh, a tank that we again don't see all that often on the North American side. We see the chieftains more often than the than the bees. Uh, I've I've noticed. Since the chieftain came out, I haven't seen a two one five B played all that much. Um Yeah, you never see them in the competitive scene, that's for sure. I like the two one five B and I think it's I personally think it's a better tank uh, at at at, ev at everything except maybe uh, uh, obviously gun depression with that rear mounted turret. But so I I don't I think it's a great tank to see on the competitive scene, and I'm surprised we don't. It see is it definitely more. one of my favorite heavies, you know, in pub matches. It's definitely up there. I absolutely love it. I'm excited to see how they work out in this. So, BDI on the left coming out with a bat chat, two IS-7s, two Mosses, and two FV-215Bs, as we were mentioning there. You want to call it NL's side? All right. Okay, so for NL, we have two bat chats, two T-57 heavies, uh, two IS-7s, and an E-4. BDI sending their bat chat straight across the B line. They come across BDI's bat chat. It's going to be a, oh. a two on one bat chat fight here. Problem for NL is if they extend too far, they're going to they're going to get hit by the heavies that are hiding in the city there. NL smart. The NL bat chats are smart enough to not overextend and commit. They're staying behind the berm and. BDI, uh, NL taking out BDI's bat chat from the center road there. Excellent initial push there by NL. Yeah, they're really smart not to poke over that hill because the, the whole BDI posse is just waiting for them. Both teams grabbing their ground in the town, getting posted up on their buildings both bat chats from the dunes are putting shots into the roads here making BDI scramble to get tighter into these buildings <laughs> that moss is taking a punishment from the T-57 and just bouncing off every other round both T-57s on a reload and I don't even know if two shots penned a moss The tank killer is on a reload, and he's on a one-shot. Coast, Coastward Spy wants to go out and take that final shot on him, but he knows that Crucial Crosshead is still sitting waiting behind him. BDI takes out the bat, one of the bat chats. Crucial Crossout is putting some shots into the side of BDI's tanks. It's he gets he gets enough damage dealt on one of the 215Bs to to help his team take him out. But now he's going to end up going down to Coastward Spy. <laughs> Coastward Spy just going through and cleaning up the reloading bat chats one by one. BDI sitting with more health remaining. But one less gun. If they can go go ahead and get these kill shots out of the way, uh, this, you'll see this match turn. Both T50 or the one T57 is on a reload here. 
his gun is out of the game. The Moss is going to come around the corner, hopefully be able to take out those two one-shots. And I think EDI is going to take this round. Yeah, you got denied, and the E4 is the only tank left for EDI. Now, they got to make sure they regroup and come at them uh, as, a, as a team, because... If the Moss... Oh, he doesn't hit so many pens. Each tank remaining, except for that healthy Moss, was essentially a one-shot a one shot for the E4. Uh, so it wasn't cut and dry uh, like it turned out to be. Uh, it, 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 he could have landed his shots one by one if they came at him uh, too aggressively individually, but you know, BDI is showing that they're Experienced tankers, and they're not gonna—they're not gonna make right. that mistake. Bacon is going to jump in here to our party chat, live on stream. Um, in in the room. Um, I don't know if he's. Okay. Well, while you're setting that up, we've got after battle report. I'll go through quickly. You got denied an E4, breaking a th breaking three thousand damage, uh, for NL. Balding Sugar coming just shy of 3,000 in the T57, and Skitter Kid in the IS-7 getting 2,500. Over on BDI's side, you've got a 4,000 damage game from a Moss with 2,850 blocked. Big block numbers there. 2,670 from the from this from Thin Donkey as well in his Moss. 3,200 dealt. Coastford. Spy and Patriarch both breaking 2,000 damage as well, and Mr. Hamid uh, coming just under 2,000. Yep. Thank <laughs> God that they're really not relying on the timer, and you know, they just pick their tanks and they're ready to roll. Discord. When you're running an event with a Discord server this size, sometimes it gets a little difficult to manage. Uh, yeah, it doesn't help that, you know, I'm on my phone doing it. Yeah. Uh, we, we possibly should have created a secondary server strictly for staff. Uh, so the so the, the roles were a lot easier to manage. But we have... Oh, by the way, we have no limits on the left. BDI on the right. This is round three for... BDI versus NL, Operation Torch. Tank picks. NL has come out with an E4. They brought the Waffle E100 out again. Two Bat Chats, two IS-7s, and a Moss. You want to call it BDI? All right. So we have what are they? two IS-7s, a Bat Chat, a 215B. Two mouses and an E4. NL's moved up the G4 and H5 corners here. Staying a little passive on the on the south side, but they've sent, if you look, they've sent their bat chats to the north again. They love sending their bat chats around to that north corner, no matter which side of the map they're on. I think I've seen NL try and occupy that territory with their bat chats. Patriarch in the E4 commanding, very uh, symmetrical to you got denied. Setting up an E4 on opposite sides of this corner is a very popular tactic. They can shoot straight across the cap, right through the middle. You can see Patriarch getting hit by You Got Denied right through the middle. That was a perfect angle for me to, to catch that shot. A little interesting for me to see the IS-7s in this back corner like this, though, for BDI. 
What do you think? Yeah, they're just like kind of like waning, and I'm not sure for what. And they're not really I mean, known for gun depression. Feel or... like they're gonna. Yeah, they maybe they have a feeling they're gonna come this way. So far, the only shot landed was the E4 ac across the center, hitting the opposite E4. Got a bit of a rotation happening on the north. Ryman's itching. Ryman is inching, inching forward here. Maybe a side shot on the moss. There it is. He backs up before the retaliation is able to come. Back up, and I can show you these bat chats. Stills are sitting up in the north corner. Second shot by the IS-7, not able to pen. Balding Sugar coming over to support. NL has not taken any damage yet. They've got a 7% lead and they're probably just going to sit back a little bit. Moss not proving to be as impenetrable as it has been in previous rounds. You can see a, uh, I'm watching the rotation happen by BDI in the background here. They're both focused on the Moss. The TDs and the, and the Moss for NL have been caught sitting here. They haven't rotated yet. And now come the BDI push. Now this is where the bat chats in that top corner are going to come into play. They've been waiting. Great rotation by BDI to come all the way over here, but at the same time NL was I had uh, a great reaction to it. They got a few good shots in from the bad chats and they took off, allowing the Waffle and the E4 to regroup with them. Both of these teams showing a lot of experience and uh, and it's become a battle of wits and strategies. Yeah, they're really just wait waiting for each other to make the first mistake. NL ringing the siren. He backs off the cap, though. He would have had enough time to cap it, but, I mean, obviously... Three-minute cap would not go unnoticed. <laughs> Just kind of circling and rotating my camera here, trying to find the next spot that's going to be pushed from. And that was cutting through the middle, crossing the cap. I wonder if they're going to claim the cap here and say, you've got a minute to come to us now with three of us on here, pulling on a fourth one. Oh, nope, they're just going to drive right through. No, they're just going to start the brawl. Maybe, oh, maybe not. Very even, even hell, 63 to 62. Both teams haven't lost the tank yet. Kegger Panther coming in very slowly with his wa waffle pan waffle E100. That tank can make anything yeah, it's really disappear. Make shots count. First tank down, BDI loses. Loses their two one of their 215Bs. 
NL is close to losing their moss, but so is BDI. Here comes the rotation by the waffle. This can make or break. Gets hit. Oh, I don't know if that mouse is going to have enough time to be uh... The E4 hits oh, him. He does. Balding Sugar pushed in at the same time as as Kegger Panther. Taking some of the heat off him. Kegger Panther on a one shot. Down goes Balding Sugar. This isn't going to be good now. I think Kegger needed to push in, even though he was a one shot. I think he needed to push in and oh, dump he just his magazine. Off that mouse. Oh, crucial cross out coming in from the rear there and taking out one of the mosses. It doesn't look too good for NL right now. One, one minute 40 f left on the timer. It's enough time to cap the base if they need to uh, because BDI's got to chase down two bat chats, and I mean, Crucial's going to be taken out here, but Tank Killer, it's not inconceivable to see him scoot away here. No. Gets hit once. Don't think he's going to get away, but there's a chance. He can use these buildings as cover. He can try. No, he doesn't make it. And that's the second victory for BDI. I'm going to have to go back. I forgot to count the numbers there from the second battle. So if you give me a chance here, I'll go back and count the numbers from that second battle. But this third battle we had, um, uh, Thin Donkey in the Moss hitting the 3,800 damage marker, leading his team, uh, leading BDI. Uh, Exawa, Patriar, Patriar and Prostachud, all breaking 2,000 damage as well. Uh, but 20 points for the, vic the round victory go to BDI. 14 points go for killing all 14, or all seven tanks. That's 34, and one, two, three, four for surviving. So that's 38 points from this round for BDI, and two, four, six for the three kills for NL. So that's 38 to 6 point round for BDI. The first round, as I said, was won by um, by NL 40 to 2. And let me just quickly go back to the. This is the round two lobby. So it was 20 points for the round win for BDI plus 14. For the kills and or so it was a 38 point round as well with one two three so it was also 38 to 6 I didn't actually 38 yeah so just confirming that so this is round four final round for this team and Ellen looking to redeem some points here NL's come out with an E4 and a Waffle again. Double Bat Chats, double IS7s, and a Moss. You'd call it BDI for me. All right, we have uh, two 15B, two Mouses, two IS7s, a Bat Chat, and an E4. <clears throat> NL doing their classic Bat Chats to the northwest corner. I do like that uh, position for, for Bat Chats and, and, and speedy mediums, depending on the tier, depending on the medium. But I do like that location for uh, the initial rush with two, two mediums paired up. Although BDI is winning the series so far, um, I, I really couldn't say that... Uh, any given round was, was dominated by other team.
There, Bat Chat just finishing up his reload with BDI. He's slowly making his way back to the battle. Yeah, he got almost half his health taken out, and I missed who did that to him. Yeah, I didn't see. I just seen him running. I'm guessing it was you got denied straight through the middle. You just got hit again. Yeah. Oh wow. You got denied. Hit him that time for sure, wasn't it? Or was it from straight across? No, it would have been. Be you got denied. Yeah, I saw his bullet go flying. His shell. Yeah, his shell. Push coming here from BDI, it looks like. Rotation from the bat chats of NL in the rear there. I'll keep that in my peripheral vision. Looks like they're making a push to get the stern in. Very even damage here. Exchange for exchange. There's those bat chats I mentioned. They're putting their magazines into pro Prosto. Both teams losing a tank. BDI's got two tanks on just a breath of health. Very close to going down. NL is going to play this very cautiously and patiently. They need these points. Balding set on fire. He needs. Oh. He needs to move. Oh He's, dear, there goes oh. the engine. There's tracked. He was, had. They all had shots on him from every which angle. Yeah, he was really stuck in a bad position, unfortunately. Over here in the top, crucial crossouts chasing down the other bat chat. He takes him down with a shot to the track and a ram. Not sure what ended up killing him, but at the same time, tank killer and the other bat chat goes down for NL. BDI leading with one extra gun, that being the moss on very low health. Crucial crossout in the bat chat looks like he's coming to clean that kill up. There it is. Nope. Can't take out Patriarch Patriar in the E4 oh, with the first the shot. It takes a couple extra shots to do it. And NL squeezing ahead in this round. Ghostward Spy, the last tank for BDI with a lot of health remaining though. Crucial cross out in the bat chat on a reload running away. Yeah, I think he just wanted to spot him up while he was reloading so they knew where he was because he wasn't spotted. This mouse is going to chase him down. <laughs> I don't think he can run for five minutes, especially with a bad chat still left out there on the uh, battlefield. And but... he's loaded now, so... Ooh, he gets a good shot into the bat chat though. Oh. Now the bat chat can't aggressively push on him because he's can't one... take a shot. Yeah. Crucial did a reload. That was preemptive. You got denied moving in on him. This mouse has just given her. Ooh, he comes over the hill. And the bat chat mm -hmm. from the rear takes him out. So NL taking that round, splitting the series with two round wins apiece, but round wins are not what's important here in the uh, 
Clan Wars Frontlines. It's the points. 20 points for winning the round goes to NL. 14 points for killing all seven tanks, plus three or three surviving tanks. So that's 20, 34, 37 points for NL in this round. And eight points for killing four tanks for BDI. So if I add those points up, 40 plus six plus 37 for NL, giving a total of 89. Two plus 38 plus 38 plus eight, giving a total of 86 for BDI. Uh, I will at this point give a major disclosure saying I am not the official scorekeeper. If my numbers are wrong, they're wrong. I don't officially keep the score. I just tally them for the viewers and I make mistakes. <laughs> um, I am not official. But uh, I'm just trying to look back at the stream for the 10 minute delay. I believe the delay has caught to the point where I'm going to do the giveaway for the code that I announced. Uh, hopefully, let's take a look how many people made it over to. Um, to my mixer channel because mixer is where the giveaways will happen i'm gonna do one now and uh we'll, we'll give it about 10 minutes and i'll do another one before we launch the next one uh so make sure you're switching over and at least tuning in dual screen and if you want on mixer and on twitch because mixer is where the giveaways happen let's do this slash Slash giveaway. 